My guest today is Michael Dowden. Michael, how are you? Doing great. Thank you. That's good to see your face again. It's been a while since we've met in person. It's been too long. <laughs> sure. Uh, what do you do, Michael? So I run a software development company called Andromeda, and I build apps for people. So we, we primarily focus on building software products for our clients. We build our own software products. And for the most part, we build those products on Google Firebase. On Firebase. Um, you know, I've heard about Firebase. I know a lot of people are using it, but I have n I have no actual experience with it. What is Firebase? Firebase is an all-in-one platform for building, deploying, and managing uh, apps. So it has everything from the serverless database, the serverless functions, uh, your analytics, your crash reporting, your ad management, your A-B testing, all of this in a single platform with a single SDK and a single web console for management to make it super quick and easy to get things running. Wow, that's totally not what I thought it was. I just always thought it was a database. Yep, and that, that's how it started, right? Uh, it's the Firebase real-time database. And that's how we got started with Firebase as well. Uh, we, were, we were starting a new app and we're looking for a solution for a database that didn't require us to do any, to have any servers, basically. Um, I've done a lot of operations work in the past. I don't really care for it. It's not my strength. And uh, we didn't have that skill set on the team at the time, and we were looking for a solution. And so that's how we got into it. And then as the platform grew, we kind of grew with it in terms of what we were, what we were doing, how we were using it. Okay, so what's, uh, I mean, it's a lot of things. I wrote them down here. Uh, it's a uh, database, it's uh, functions, it's analytics, it's ad management. Uh, there was more, but that's all I wrote down. Sure. <laughs> let's start, well, let's start with the database. Since you said that's what the original product yep. is. What, tell me about that and how does it differ from um, uh, other databases? It, like, does it fall into a category like a document database or a yep. database? So, or so Firebase now has two databases. The original Firebase real-time database is actually called the RTDB real-time database. And it is a JSON data store. And what that means is that when you retrieve data at a specific location, it returns the full JSON object, everything at that location and below it. And so you use a path style syntax to retrieve information. Um, it's not quite like you would normally query JSON, but it's, it's literally like slash this object slash this object slash this object and then you grab whatever's there okay. um you can you can use the web console to actually export and import json files directly into specific locations in the database but it's a pure json data store um there are pros and cons to that it is but it's, it's really, really interesting. Then there's the Firestore database, which has become increasingly popular recently. And the Firestore database is a document database. It has documents and collections and then sub collections. You can query across collections. Any collection that has the same name, regardless of its location, can be queried as a single group. Um, but that's kind of the difference. The, the Firestore database for example, supports up to 1 million concurrent connections to the database. So what that means is you can have 1 million active listeners at a specific database location, and then any changes made to the data at that location, to, to, say to that document, for example, any changes made to that document will be reflected in real time, which is milliseconds, back to all 1 million listeners. Uh, one million excellent yeah <laughs> uh oh very close so very sc highly scalable um uh really uh fast throughput and um yep uh, and what it's, about, it's uh, very easy too and that's, that's that's one of the things that i love about it is because it is it's a websocket based sdk so mm -hmm. when i listen to a document 
I can just automatically get the changes. Now I can fetch the document as a one-time read, or I can listen to the document, listen to changes to it. And that means that certain applications are super easy, right? Because I just, I want to listen to this part of the database and anytime it changes, you update my app accordingly. Got it. So if I've got a web page and it's showing, uh, I don't know, uh, current sales or current price, yep. you can immediately Absolutely. connect changes to that as every With other no, without yep. refreshing. No extra coding. No extra coding no at extra all. Code. Very cool. All right. Uh, well, um, so what about functions? What does that do? Yeah, sure. So so functions, cloud functions um, exist in Firebase and on uh, the Google Cloud platform. So one of the interesting things about Firebase is that Google has rolled it in as a full member of the Google Cloud platform. That means that when you create things in Firebase using the Firebase ecosystem, the Firebase SDK, those things are reflected within the Google Cloud platform. So if I create a cloud function in Firebase, that function will also exist in the Google Cloud platform. Same for Firestore and, and even the storage. So there's a Google storage buckets exist in Firebase for managing files, file uploads, that sort of thing. Those also exist in Google Cloud Platform. So the first thing is, is that. It's really interesting. I can use the simplicity of Firebase, but if I need additional power, I can flip over to the Google Cloud Platform and add additional customizations to things. The cloud functions are essentially uh, is similar to like the, the Amazon uh, Lambda right it is a single unit of work that can run and be scaled independently um, so the smaller the function the faster it can spin up the, the easier it can you know you, you can scale it out but essentially what it means is that when that function gets called for whatever reason it will spin up an instance to manage the work if you suddenly have it just a ton of load it'll spin up 10 20 100 functions to manage the work and Google handles all that stuff for you in the Firebase ecosystem. Um, within Firebase, you can use either, uh, you can use Node.js with either TypeScript or JavaScript to write your functions. Uh, in the Google ecosystem, you also have access to, I think it's Python, Go, and, oh boy, I don't remember the other languages. There's a couple others I, um, that you can use to write your functions. Maybe Java? It may be Java. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> I think that may be it. Uh, I, I use I use I stick with uh, TypeScript for the most part for all, all the, the all the things I do. I'm glad um, Microsoft's getting there somewhere, <laughs> right? So and and there, there, the admin SDK that allows you administrative access to the Firebase ecosystem and APIs uh, is available for .NET as well as other languages. And so when when you write a cloud function. You can write HTTP endpoints. That's not really the strength. The strength is on all the triggers. So I can write a cloud function that will listen to changes to the database, creates, reads, updates, whatever. I can create functions that will listen to file uploads. I can create functions that will listen to a new user being created, all these different types of things. I can uh, have scheduled jobs that will occur on a periodic basis. I can listen to specific topics on Google's message queue, the Google Pub Sub. So all these different events, and then you start getting into that serverless architecture where you're really event driven in your code, and it's really easy to build and deploy those functions. Got it. Yeah, uh, Microsoft has something in Azure called Functions. Yep. And it works similarly. Same exact. Auto scaling, yep. it's all serverless, and it has a bunch of built in, we call them triggers. Yep, will, exactly. Uh, somebody inserts a row in a database, for example, or drops a message like you, it's subscribed to that. Fire is it? Ser serverless is fantastic. Uh, yeah, it's, the simplicity of it is really nice. Um, and then uh, you mentioned uh, analytics. This is is yep. that a cross cutting concern to analyze the database and the functions and everything? Sure. So, so analytics in Firebase is basically a simplified way to add Google Analytics to your apps. One of the great things about Firebase Analytics, and this is this is something that they've really improved on uh, in the last couple of years, Firebase Analytics is now available for web apps for Google Analytics, but also for uh, Android and iOS apps. Hmm. So Firebase. 
as the platform has developed, has really supported all three platforms. So iOS native, Android native, and web. And web was actually the worst supported of those for a long time and has almost entirely caught up. There's just a couple exceptions to that. And there's a lot of things. You can actually use a lot of Firebase functionality from like Unity, for example. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to deploy a mobile game, for example, you could use Firebase, the real-time database, to like manage the state of the game, stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, so, what kind of yeah. is, are we analyze? Is it is it performance? Is it uh, throughput? Uh, yeah, so so it, usage? It's, it's typical web analytics. So it's going to give you your your user usage. It's going to it's going to show utilization of different of different URLs or different components or mm -hmm. however you're tracking those things. In a web scenario, it ends up looking almost exactly like Google Analytics for web. Uh, it's just a little bit different on the UI, but it does it is actually using Google Analytics under the covers. So mm -hmm. things you would expect to find there, you will generally find in uh, analytics on Firebase. Uh, there's also, for, for mobile apps only, they don't have this for web yet, they have Crashlytics, which allows you to monitor crashes that happen in the app mm -hmm. so that you can actually see what's going on in the client device uh, when errors occur and, and pull that in. Since that's not available for web, we actually use TrackJS for that for our apps. Um, mm. There's also a performance testing and app distribution and some other things related to mobile apps specifically that I don't get into much. But one of the things that is also available as far as operating your applications is, uh, for example, cloud messaging. It's called Firebase Cloud Messaging or FCM. It's become one of the most popular solutions for adding push notifications into mobile apps regardless of mm if it's a web, like uh, like an Ionic type of app, or if it's a native app. And uh, so this is uh, in response to some event, you'll push some uh, notification down to the client and let yep. them know something important has happened. Yep, exactly. Yes. Uh, and then I also, I'm surprised to see this in here, ad management. What, uh, <laughs> is, that, is that mostly for mobile applications or? But yep, so so it has ad mob built in, so you can actually show ads within your apps uh, directly from the Firebase. Uh, that, of course, ties into the analytics and everything else. Um, so that's pretty cool. The A-B testing also ties into all of this. So if you have analytics in your app, you can do A-B testing and use that with their remote config tool. Remote config basically is a solution for... Um, essentially feature flags, and you, you can use it for other things. It was really designed, though, to be able to turn parts of the application on and off for specific subsets of your users. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not just a true-false, you have access to this, you don't have access to this. You can subdivide your users and provide different configuration values mm -hmm. based upon who you're looking at or based upon a variety of different criteria. You combine that with A-B testing, and now you can kind of decide who gets which sets of functionality or who gets what sets of values pretty dynamically. And that's all that can even be tied into analytics and other things. So you can see what's performing better and, and adjust dynamically. Those are things that I haven't gotten into nearly as much as I should. <laughs> but it, it's, it's a pretty cool thing to have built in because they're really wanting to make sure that the tools that you have available once you deploy the app are the tools you need to really help it succeed. Yeah, I mean, A-B testing is one reason for that. I think another one might be uh, uh, you're, you may offer features that uh, you have to pay for. So uh, some cafeteria-style application. Yep, uh, correct. Uh, that's really useful for that. Uh, yep. but it sounds like you're using uh, a huge number of features within Firebase. Is it, if I wanted to start using Firebase, do I have to uh, buy all in or can I just pick and choose no, 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 not, not, not at all. In fact, the, the 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 place that I would recommend that people start with Firebase, honestly, is probably Especially. the one we haven't talked about yet, and that is hosting. Oh. Um, Firebase static file hosting is ridiculously fast. It is easy to use. Uh, you can, for example, you can install the Firebase uh, CLI and type Firebase deploy, and then oh. it's up. <laughs> and you can 
it, it versions automatically. So if you ever push something out that you're not happy with, you can go to the web console and click rollback to any other previous version and boom, you're on that version now. It's, it's an atomic release, so it does it all at once. There's no downtime when you do a release. It, they use uh, CDNs to boost performance automatically. They provide your HTTPS and your certs automatically. Um, and you can get a lot of traffic in just on the free plan. Hmm. For for hosting, so I would I would like I use it instead of things like GitHub hosting or, or other solutions. Mm -hmm. That's my go-to. Static hosting does that mean it's just for static pages like HTML? It's not for something like a Node.js application. That is correct. Uh, that being said, the CLI uh, is perfectly capable of deploying to a cloud function. Uh, so, for example, I, I work with Angular, and, and I'm not using this feature yet, um, but one of the things Angular has is Angular Universal. Angular Universal allows you to do server-side pre-rendering, kind of built into Angular. And Firebase Deploy actually has direct support for that. So if you have an Angular Universal app, for example, you can tell it, hey, don't deploy this to static file hosting, deploy this as a cloud function. Hmm. And it will then have access to Node.js in the back end to do all the pre-rendering and things that it needs to do as you're serving up the applications. Oh, interesting. That's a lot of stuff. Is there anything <laughs> that, that we should? Um, that really covers a lot of the, the, the important things, I think. They do have a, a handful of machine learning uh, this is a really small subset of their machine learning toolkit that's available primarily for just the mobile apps at this point because they need to be able to tie that into the device. Um, but no, it, it has everything you need to be able to build apps. So we, like I said, we have, we have, for example, a parking application that we we wrote about six years ago now, started working on, and we parking in Indianapolis. It well, it's it's actually to. The, the check-in tool. So it is a parking management application. So if you have a parking lot and you want to run it as a commercial parking lot, you can nice. use our software to do that. And uh, we've been running that on Firebase the whole time. Uh, if somebody wants to get started, where's the best place to go to learn? That's a really great question. Uh, the Firebase docs are pretty good. They have a really good uh, YouTube series. And then uh, look for people talking about conferences. I, I've done a, a Firebase workshop a bunch of times. That have, I've had lots of people that have gotten started with Firebase just by going through the workshop and building their first app, for example. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people that are offering that sort of content, but realistically going through their docs is a pretty easy quick start. Okay, and I see I'm looking at it right now, firebase.google.com slash docs. That's correct. <laughs> uh, are you doing some speaking or do you have some schedule now that yeah, the world's I, starting to open up again? I, yeah, I, I do have some some events coming up. I'm actually scheduled more, mostly throughout the rest of the year. Uh, just last, was it last week or two weeks ago? I'm, I'm just totally losing track of time. <laughs> last week, I actually did a uh, full Firebase demo um, for a meetup in, in Serbia. So it was really cool. In Serbia. Very cool. Yeah. It's, it's one of the great things about that have happened in the last year is the ability to just attend events and speak at events around the world has become super easy. I love it. Uh, that is really cool. I'm actually going to go to Croatia in October. Nice. It's right next to Serbia. It's awesome. I've never been to that part of the world. It's awesome. And you have virtually. <laughs> virtually. <laughs> All right, Michael, thank you so much for your time. I've learned a lot today. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. One thing that really happened this past year as we, we spend a lot more time at home and alone and everything is we're separated from our friends and our family. And it's really technology that helped me stay connected to the people I care about, to my friends, allowed us to really interact. And it's been interesting to see that new role of technology in keeping us connected.